Greetings and welcome to In-Depth. I'm DK Ronston. Now, we are inside Financial Literacy Month, but the conversation we're having with this young man, it seems as though it's always financial education, is always financial literacy every day of the year. Philip Williams is a seasoned registered investment advisor accredited by the Trinidad and Tobago Securities Exchange Commission. We're going to be talking a little bit about Fill the Gap, and you're already seeing the tagline Information to Empower, as well as a program that he has coming up called the I Invest program. Lots of information. Stay tuned for it. So, William, how do you do, sir? DK, thank you so much for having me. And I'm glad that you mentioned, yes, this month is Financial Literacy Month. And I'm glad that you mentioned that. And you are correct. In the world of Fill the Gap, every day is about financial education and financial literacy. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. But answer the person, because we just came out of spiritual seasons where individuals would have been putting aside, doing with less, and consciously making sacrifices. But answer the, so I don't know if you want to build off of that, but answer the person who asks you, but investment is not just for rich people. That, well, you know, I get that. I get that all the time. And let me just, off the bat, let me just say that is not true, right? Investing is for everyone. Granted, there's some things that you have to, think about before you start investing but i think people feel as though you need you know thousands of dollars or a whole heap of money to start investing and that's not the case there's some investment products that you could start with as little as a hundred dollars so investing is not just for wealthy people and reality is wealthy people they weren't always wealthy they started investing they started somewhere and that is how you accumulate wealth so well investing is not just for the rich people and it's interesting how you mentioned sacrificing i would mention that there are some things that you need to put in place or just check on before you actually start investing to ensure that it is the right time so for example in terms of sacrificing i'm assuming you mean like saving and setting aside money that's very important it's important to have emergency funds um, it's important to ensure that you don't have too much debt before you start investing when i say too much that like credit card debt which is very expensive it's very important to ensure that that is not the case but once those things you have those things you have a good foundation then you are a candidate to invest and if you are concerned about your risk that's understandable because it's new territory and you might think well you know i can lose my money investing you hear these stories about you know the stock market going up and down i would say that there's a lot of risk um and not and not taking and not taking risk and i like that there's a lot of risk in not taking risk but sometimes there are risks that you can take after you have seen the lay of the land or you are aided and abetted as it were by a financial advisor even though i know some people are a little leery still of wait now I'm going to have this person watching my money and seeing where it's going and all these sorts of things. So and if, so, even before we get to the, the, the pillars of fill the gap, I want you to give me an idea of uh, or assuage some of those concerns. How does someone go about saying, okay, well, I want to get somebody to help me invest, but I'm not sure how to find someone. What are some of those steps? What, what are some of the suggestions you would give them? Yeah, that's and that's very important, you know, because you know I like to talk about investing as a team sport. One, you being a, a prime candidate as in evaluating yourself. You are, you know, obviously a major part of the team, but you are correct in terms of getting the right people on your team. So before you start investing, let's say, for example, in the stock market, you need to have a registered broker. And there are eight registered brokers um, in Trinidad and Tobago. They have, they provide different services, but essentially that is your middleman to get to the stock market. So you need to have the right broker. Some brokers, the minimum amount may be $1,000. Others, it's $10,000. Some, they're $25,000. So you have to find the right one that is appropriate for you. Some of them give investment advice, but there's a charge for that. Some of them just provide you with access to the stock market with limited um, advice, but 
a very good service. So it's really finding the right broker that is appropriate for you. They're all good, but it just depends on what, which one is good for you or which one is best suited for you. In terms of the investment advice, you certainly want to know that this person, um, one, they have years of experience. So certainly you, you want to have more than five years of experience in the financial services sector, particularly in, in investing. And you, you want to find out, you know, if they are accredited, are they registered with the SEC or Trinidad and um, Tobago Securities Exchange Commission? So once this person is vetted, once you can check, and it's very easy to check up on people these days, you know, online, you can, you will know who is who and what is what. There's LinkedIn. Uh, there are different ways for you to find out. Another way is just word of mouth. If you have a good friend, a family member who has an experience or has had an experience with a broker or an investment advisor, and they can give you a background check and say, listen, listen, I've had a good experience with X. I've had a good experience with this broker or this particular advisor, and I think you should go there. And that is usually um, my advice in terms of getting someone or pro pointing someone in the direction um, where they could go. Or they can also message Fill the gap on the various handles that I have, which is fill the gap TT. And I provide that advice as well in terms of pointing you in the right direction and answering questions that would ensure that you are making the right decision or the best decision that is suitable for you in terms of building your investment team. And in terms of fill the gap as an uh, an organization and entity itself. You being the founder, there are five pillars that you have the organization, this initiative standing on. So give give them to me incrementally and then build out for me a little bit, thanks. I love how you mentioned that, Vicky. You've done your research. That's brilliant. Yes, there are five pillars. And the five pillars of PTG uh, is one, budgeting for your life, for your life, right? Saving with a purpose, managing your debt wisely, setting smart financial goals and investing to create wealth and it's in that order so when you think about it you know people have a lot of hopes and dreams they have big financial goals and to achieve those things you have to have the right foundation so you can't just wing it you have to think about it as you know you're building a steady structure what is this really going to stand on and that's what the pillars are about so saving with a uh, um, invest uh, budgeting for your life sorry is really think about uh if your company has an income statement and a balance sheet, think about what's your personal income statement. How does that look? How does your personal balance sheet look? Companies make decisions in terms of when they have income, what they want to retain, what they're going to spend, when they're going to spend, how they're going to spend. And you have to look at yourself as big business. So the budgeting sounds simple. Um, sometimes it may, I think people are, you know, they may have a budget in their head, but it's very important to put pen to paper or fingers the keyboard, whether it's an Excel spreadsheet. But in this day and age, they have apps on your phone that you can track your expenses. If you don't know where your money is going, that's a very, very big problem. Because a lot of times you hear people say, well, Phil, I don't really have any money to save. But the only way you would know if you do or you don't is if you track your spending. You know what the non-negotiables are. So I have to spend on this. You know, I have to pay my rent. I have to do this. I have to buy particular things. But there may be some things that you may be able to cut back on. There may be some things that you're spending on that you're really not aware because it just it's it's not front and center. And until you do that, that's the only way. So budgeting for your life, that's number one. Saving with a purpose, you you want to ensure. I mean, one, I'll, I'll use the example of an emergency fund. So according, the statistics will show that a lot of people um, don't have any money set aside for an emergency and that is it's worrying and actually that could put a strain on your mental health like so if something really happens you're not in a position to take care of it so you may be relying on credit card debt or you may be relying on family members or friends so you want to start creating that buffer saving with a purpose for an example an emergency fund you know setting aside four to six months of your salary or your expenses sorry in the event of something happening Managing your debt wisely is understanding how interest works. So, you know, most times a lot of people go for a loan and they don't understand what that monthly payment is. That payment is broken into two things, principal and interest. And just understanding how interest works, 5.25% versus 5% over 30 years is thousands of dollars. So it's about, you know, and that's just an example, negotiating to get the best rate, understanding you know if you reduce your principal at this time this is how much i will save on interest and understanding how a credit card works is particularly for young people 
because the money is not yours. You might have that excitement of having the card in your hand and the money is not yours. And you might have the thought, well, this is a minimal payment and I can manage this, you know, $300 a month, I borrow $10,000. That 10,000 gets into 30,000. And that gets into almost 10 to 15 years of you paying the minimum balance. You're just paying interest on interest. So it's important to understand how that works so that you can manage it wisely. And setting smart financial goals, if a goal really matters to you and it's a big deal, then you should put pen to paper to write down what that means, exactly what that goal is. So I'll give an example. You know, I want to save more money in 2024. That's a great goal. But, you know, how much money do you want to save? Well, maybe, you know, I want to save $1,000 every month so that at the end of, you know, by December 31st, I have $12,000. So you want to start crafting a goal that way, what it means to you. And I mean, it's a little more than that, but I'm, it's really putting pen to paper so that this goal now comes out of your head. It's not a dream, it's a reality. And you have steps to take to get there and investing to create wealth. That's the last one, the last pillar, the fifth pillar which, you know, once you have the foundation laid properly, you've saved, you have emergency, you have an emergency fund, you've budgeted, you have goal set, you're managing your debt wisely. It's a great time to start investing. And you have to think about investment products, investment vehicles, and this, like the stock market as a tool for you to create and build wealth. And those are the five pillars of, of PTG. And it is a great time to invest, but it's also a great time for us to take a short break. We are speaking with Philip Williams, founder of Fill the Gap. We'll return after this because we haven't started to speak about the iInvest program yet. So we're going to get into that when we return. <laughs> Welcome back. We are getting some financial information and financial education right now with Philip Williams, founder of Fill the Gap. And But there's one of the things in terms of like the first pillar for, for PTG budgeting for your life and one i look at that your and put some emphasis on it because sometimes people look at other people's wallets exactly. sometimes people look at other people's lifestyles and exactly. they try to do things that are not for themselves rather that are not necessarily in the the closest grip with reality and this is even outside of saying, okay, well, you have champagne taste and Moby budget. But even some people even might be trying to save an amount because they're trying to make up, make up for lost time, make up, cover lost ground, but it's still not realistic. So that is one of the things I look up, look at. And when you say budgeting for your life, nobody else's, but oh. people see about your business. Exactly. That's listen, that's very important. I understand why someone, you know, it's normal to look at other people because things are in your face. And even now, like with social media, it's there. You might see someone living a particular life. They may have that lifestyle. They may not. They may be pretending. But you have to focus on you, you know, your financial journey. Uh, it's, I will say, it's a race that you run at your own pace. You know, you don't, you should not be looking at someone else. And even if you find yourself looking at someone else, that could have you in a state as well because you think someone else has things that you don't have and that you want to have, but you have to focus on where you're at and, and where you want to go and do the things that you need to do to get there. So it's a very interesting point, very important point that you raise there for your life. Nobody else's life, your life. But looking at where we're at, I want to, I want to start to talk about the iInvest program, please. What okay. is it? brainchild? What are some of the things that went into saying, nah, man, or is it that you saw a gap? Talk to me about it. The, that's the thing, yeah. So I did, you know, that's what Fill the Gap is about. I did, and the gap, you know, Fill the Gap is about finding, helping people to find and fill the gaps in their financial knowledge. And what really, how the program came about. So usually it's one thing if you're doing, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, you're sitting with somebody and you're talking to them and helping them with their finances. But after a while, I started, you know, people started asking me, well, you know, do you have a course? Do you, you know, do particular things? And I found myself having, I had the ability to get a particular reach through, you know, using different webinars, whether it's, it's Zoom or the various platforms that are available for you to reach more people. And that really was the catalyst to develop the courses, really to reach more people. And the I Invest program, it's hinged on the five pillars, but really what it is, it's five digestible modules 
that takes you through step by step all the way about helping you with you know helping you through the five five pillars so you have to do a bit of introspection you know looking at where you are where you want to be and what are the things you need to do to get there but as i said the five modules are based on the five pillars and you know somebody might say well you know phil budgeting i have that covered you know i think i have my goals set out i think you know i do i manage my debt properly i don't have any credit card debt i don't have debt i just want to start investing and i want to fast forward straight to module five or module three or four i don't need module you know one or two and that's okay my point is the course is really designed to meet you where you are right so it's for a newbie who is very new to personal finance and you might feel lost because boy i feel like don't know where to start i don't even know until that person i want to tell you a lot of times you might be feel overwhelmed about your financial journey you might actually be doing a lot better than you think but you have to take a step back to really assess where you are so for the person who is a beginner the course is for you somebody who is intermediate you know i'm not sure about the financial products or the landscape in trinidad what is available for me what is a mutual fund what is a stock what is a bond how could i get involved what is this really about all of that is entailed as well. But and for the person who just wants to cut straight to the chase and say, listen, I'm ready to invest, the course is designed to meet you right where you are. So it's a comprehensive personal finance and investment education course that gives you access to community, uh, to hold your hand, live teaching, um, webinars over, you know, during the course of the year. So it's not just you can do it on your own at your own pace, at your own leisure. But getting access to the, the I Invest program also allows you to have access to the community and access to the Fill the Gap team to help you and encourage you and coach you along the way. Even some of the best players, all of the best players um, needed a coach. They had a coach, they had a mentor, they had a guide, and they had someone to keep them steady along the way to get to you know, that journey um, and where they want to be. So One of the that's the course in a nutshell. Okay, and what I what I, what I'm what I think I'm hearing is that it is a modular, but it builds on it builds on each module before. Yes, it does. It's 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 step by step, step by step, and taking you through the five pillars, with as I said, on access to you know webinars, online teaching, and also there is the opportunity at the end of each. So there are very various um topics in each module. That will just test your skills. So you will know, you will know, you will see your progress um, as you are going through the course. There are also live videos and demonstrations with you, you know, for you to know where to find things that, you know, that would help you to provide tools for you along your personal finance journey and investment journey. Things that are available, they're free, they're out there. You just don't know how to access them. You don't know which website to go to. You don't know which tab to click. You don't know how to find out, well, you know, how do I calculate this interest payment? How can I find out how much money I would earn on this type of investment? Where would I find an investment calculator? Stuff like that. Um, there are actual live demos throughout the course that will give you valuable to tools to help you um, with your personal finance and your investment education. And you said it's a year long? No, no, no. It's like the course, again, so the course, you can, someone might finish the course in, in a week to two weeks. So it's if I, you, do, you, you do it on your own itself, yeah. but of, once you, with, with access, because your, your finance journey, it's, it's until, right? It goes until. So even if you get to a point where, let's say you're investing, the, the world of finance and investments move with cycles, they move with the economy. So you would always need, unless you, you know, it's good that you are learning as you, you know, grow and teaching yourself, but it's also good to have guidance. So throughout, so even in the world of investment, you would still need guidance in terms of, you know, making the right investment decisions, helping you with your investment education. So typically, I mean, I think realistically, somebody really said, listen, I'm going to just put my head down and I'm going to dedicate, you know, I'm going to do an hour every evening. Um, you can get this done. You can get it done in, in two to two to three weeks. But somebody might take a month. Somebody might take two months. You could, you do it at your own leisure because there's some things that you can't, you really don't, you don't want to rush, right? So if you're drafting a, 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 a financial goal, let's say, you don't want to rush that. If you are thinking about, you know, 
creating your money master plan because that's what I invest is going to help you do create your own money master plan. What is your money master plan? You know, what's your money manifesto? What do you see for yourself? That's something you have to sit down and think about, put some thoughts in, put pen to paper, and you don't want to rush that. So somebody might be able to get that done in half hour to hours. Somebody might take two hours. Somebody might have to start and then come back to it. It just depends on how you learn and how you progress. So it is, as I said, um, it's digestible. Um, it can, it will, anybody who, you know, it will, it's designed to meet you where you are, but people learn and progress at different paces. And so you, you know, take it at your own pace, but definitely not a year. If you take a year to complete the course, no, then, then we have a problem, you know, it shouldn't take you, it shouldn't take you a year to complete the five modules, no? Nice. But the, I want to step back a bit and because you've been talking about writing goals down, having them as concrete things that are separate from your body and your mind. What is the importance of having those goals written or stored somewhere outside of your mind that you can look at? And I'll even tie that into the importance of financial education. Because it is extremely important. And I'm telling you something from personal experience. And it's something that I start, started in my 30s. When you have something in your head, um, it's kind of dreamy. And there are some people who are very skillful and they're very dedicated. I think they're not on the normal distribution curve. So somebody who has something in their head and, and it is a big plan and they can execute it without having a, putting the plan down on paper. So statistics will show when you, when you start writing things down and documenting it in a particular way you are actually holding yourself accountable you are actually now seeing this this is now out of your head it's no longer a dream that is the beginning of you um shaping your dreams and turning them into reality so it's 100 percent important to take the, the time to think about what you want and just think about like how much does this goal really mean to me like, what does it really mean to me? How important is it? And if it is important, you will take the time to draft this goal. And there is a way to write a goal down. Right? Goals have to be smart, meaning they have to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. That's a smart goal. Specific as in, okay, specific. By the end of the year, I want X amount of, I want it in this area. I want very specific, right? Realistic, it can't be something that you, that cannot happen it has to be, you know, it has to be measurable. It has to be attainable. And they have to set some kind of, you have to set a time bomb to, you know, some kind of time frame to achieve these goals. But if you don't put pen to paper, you're not giving yourself the best shot of achieving some of your big dreams, your big goals and aspirations. Um, you're actually hurting yourself. So it's very, very important to put your goals down on paper, to hold yourself accountable, because that's how you're actually going to know to if you are drifting or of course you're going to bring yourself back on course in terms of so if it was a savings goal okay so you didn't hit your savings goal this month but you have that goal in front of you all right next month you will get back on track chances are if you didn't have the goal written down one month could turn into two two months could turn into three so i'm just using that as an example it's very important to put pen to paper and write your goals down and give yourself the best shot of achieving it within the time frame that you want to achieve it in but in terms of getting back on track, we we out of time, at thief and at stealing some time. But just <laughs> remind me, remind me of contact information, please. Okay, so all the handles fill the gap, fill as in P H I L B T H E T T. That's on Instagram and that's on TikTok. That's also on LinkedIn and fillthegap.co. That's the website where you would find all of the information for I invest. So fillthegap.co. Um, that's the website where you get the information and sign up for the I invest program. All right. Thank you very much, Philip Williams. Looking at the things that will be coming out of this, and thank you for making the time. And on behalf of the entire TTT News team, this has been In Depth with me, DK Ronster. Thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm.